Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Stylosa and we've got a beautiful Overwatch hero balance update straight from the developers. So what are they going to do to the heroes in this game? Let's work all of this out. But before we do that, there is no nerf to Sojin. Sojin is going to remain at her current power level for the foreseeable future, which probably means until the end of this season. Now, I find this kind of interesting because if you look at the top 500 lists for DPS in any region on any platform, well, maybe not on Switch. I don't really know what happens on Switch. So I'm not going to say any platform, but the major platforms, let's say. Sojourn, boom, Sojourn's going to be at the top. Maybe the consoles are a little bit different, but on PC, Sojourn is just everywhere, everywhere. And it's that fully charged railgun is really, really powerful. And uh, yeah, Sojourn's just mega, mega strong. Arguably one of the best DPS heroes we've ever seen in the game ever. She's so powerful. Anyway, they're not going to touch her. But who are they going to touch? Well, we've got a little bit of preamble before we get into the changes or you can kind of see Sombra is going to get looked at. So this is what they say. With several weeks in the books, we've been so humbled and honored that over 25 million players have answered the call of Overwatch 2. With the live service now more stable, we'd like to take some time to focus on what we have planned for Hero Balance in an upcoming game update. Prior to the changes that we have planned for Season 2, something we'll have more to say on later. So yeah, these this is just like the mid-season kind of change. No major changes for Season uh, 2 are going to be announced just yet, but they will be later. That's fine. What we talked about our plans in Season 2 in our previous dev blog, there are some hero balance adjustments we'd like to make sooner. As promised, we're focusing on some tactical adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very diplomatic way of putting nerfs. <laughs> Tactical adjustments. <laughs> oh dear. Meant to bring current standouts like Diva, Zarya, Genji and Sombra more in line with the rest of the roster. Okay, and like I said, most notably, there is a bit of an omission there in, in Sojin. And I like playing Sojin. I don't want to see it nerfed into the ground, but... <laughs> okay, let's do this. So Sombra. All right, this is the Sombra changes. Hack ability lockout duration reduced from 1.75 to 1.5 seconds. Like it. I think I like any nerf to Sombra. <laughs> and I think most people will, unless they're a Sombra main, and then they'll be like, no, we don't want the nerfs. <laughs> Hacked enemies are no longer valid targets for hacking for the duration of the effect. This is good because in conjunction with the previous change, before it was changed, before it gets changed in these patch notes, Sombra could repeatedly hack the tank over and over again, and it would just stop the tank using abilities. It was kind of annoying and frustrating. Um, Sombra's never always did that. Generally, they were killing the back line. Uh, but it was frustrating when it happened. So, yeah, that, that's cool. I like that. Hacked damage multiplier has been reduced from 40 to 25%. Now, this is a heavy, heavy nerf. And this will help you if you are a support getting dove upon by that Sombra or that Sombra that's just camping your spawn when you're dead because she can move super fast when she's in Viz. She finds you, she hacks you. 40% increased damage and you're dead. But now it's been taken down to 25. And these are the developer comments on this change. With Sombra's rework, she gained a lot more damage to help account for the reduced ability lockout duration of Hack. This has proven to be too deadly for a flanker with easy access to the enemy back lines, and we've similarly had to address the damage output of heroes like Tracer, Reaper, and now Genji in the 5v5 format. She can also no longer channel Hack on an already hacked target, as feedback indicated the reduced cooldown combined with hacking from stealth proved to be too frustrating for many players. This is essentially a per target cooldown that enables hack to keep its current four second cooldown for potentially hacking multiple targets. So I think this is a I think this is a good change to, to Sombra. I, I don't think many people say that this is bad, unless you are like a diehard Sombra main, then of course you don't want nerfs. So I, I totally get that. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Genji. Now, Genji, Genji, Genji. So he, I think this nerf destroys Genji, I think. Ah, uh, anyway, let's just read through this, and then we'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give, you I'll give a bit of like my thoughts on this. So, maximum ammo reduced from thirty to twenty-four. That's quite a lot. Shuriken damage reduced from twenty-nine to twenty-seven. And the dev comments are: Genji is a hero that has greatly benefited from the move to five v five. Changing to a single tank and the reduction of crowd control has meant Genji has had less obstacles in his way. However, he hasn't received tuning updates since he wasn't actively in the meta until launch, something also informed by our general preference to avoid preemptive adjustments when possible. We also saw that in early beta tests, other flanking heroes such as Tracer and Reaper were also significantly more effective in Overwatch 2. These changes will bring Genji more in line with the other flanking damage heroes. Now, you know what? I, the reason why I am sort of like a little, it's a little bit strange this one is 
I think as time goes on, players deal with Genji better. And I, I've noticed that happening in my games. Sure, when the game first came out, there was just Genji was killing everyone. Nobody knew how to stop him. Um, Nano Genji was just destroying everyone with Nano Blade. But then as time goes on, you know, it, it, these are just anecdotal examples. But if I'm playing tank and Genji whips out his Dragon Blade, and I'm, I don't know, let's say I'm Orisa, I just spear spin into him and push him away. If I'm playing Diva, I fly into him and push him away. You know, if, if I'm playing DPS and I see him do it, I try and kill him. And I hope the rest of my team help. Because obviously you couldn't do it on yourself. You know, a Nano Genji is going to be pretty hard to stop for like in a 1v1. Unless you're a tank. Like, no one else is going to stop that. But I think like in time, players deal with this. My worry with this is by... I mean, they're literally gimping his damage here. And saying that, oh, he's a flanker. And he's really benefited from this. And they've also gave no mention of the fact that Genji benefited from the new DPS passive quite a lot. Um, which... I mean, I don't, I don't really, <laughs> is Genji even being played as a flanker? This is the thing. Genji is like in the enemy's face. He's diving on top of them. Yeah, okay, he's flanking a little bit, but it's not like Genji exists on the, like on the edge of the map and looks for a target to go in. Genji was just literally at the front, spamming his shurikens, trying to build his ult, then going in for a dragon blade or just going in for, a, you know, a normal blade. Maybe he'd isolate the odd target and go onto that. He's a dive hero. Um, I don't know. I just I just think with Genji, even though I you know I'm not a Genji player, I don't have much Genji playtime really, all things considered. Um I just think that sometimes Overwatch is maybe a little <laughs> No, I know this if, if you can take this a lot of ways. You can take this the way of like Genji, I think he's a really cool hero and a really fun hero. And when he's good, I think the game benefits from it because the game looks really awesome when Genji's being played, especially at the pro level, but just in general gameplay is really awesome he's got a really cool kit but i also know that it's quite frustrating if genji is just killing you or if you feel like you don't have any options like oh he's pulled out a dragon blade we just all die now because no one's going to deal with this i just i don't know i just feel that they should have had a bit more faith in the players with this change and just left it a little bit longer i mean really you could have got rid of this genji change and just nerfed sojin instead and then i'd be fine <laughs> so i don't know about genji on one hand i can understand on the other hand i don't know i think it's a bit heavy-handed because I think this might really shut down Genji quite a lot. Because uh, he, he's losing a lot of damage here. And uh, Next to be Zarya. Now, I've been playing loads of Zarya. I don't want that Zarya to be nerfed. Because it's funny just walking through the front line and lasering everyone down. <laughs> but it had to happen. It's got to happen. And it is happening. And this is what they're doing. So, barrier duration reduced from 2.5 to 2 seconds. That's a pretty big nerf. Your barriers are going to go down much quicker now. And barrier cooldown has been increased from 10 to 11 seconds. And the developers say... Early player sentiment predicted Zarya as one of the weakest solo tanks in 5v5. Through her high damage potential and barrier uptime, uh, though, sorry, her high, her high damage potential and barrier uptime have proven to be extremely effective. For opponents, feedback has indicated this can feel as though Zarya has a very limited, limited windows of vulnerability, which feels difficult to deal with when combined with her rampaging damage potential. <laughs> Uh, ramping sorry but it is <laughs> i've lost my mind you can probably tell guys my voice is like going i don't know what's going on with this covid crap that i've had although i'm not positive anymore i'm positive for like four days but it is annihilated my voice holy hell anyway these changes will reduce the barrier uptime making it slightly more difficult for her to gain energy and provide enemies with more time to deal damage to her. so the thing with like i'll say this the thing with zarya is in overwatch one you knew if she bubbled herself that's it the comms would be bubble gone, Zarya bubble down, bubble, she's bubbled, whatever, bubble, bubble gone, kill her, focus Zarya, because you knew you had a window of opportunity to kill her. In Overwatch 2, it's not that simple, because she bubbles herself, and then she might have another bubble. She might not have another bubble, she might use it on someone else, but it's much more difficult to keep track of these two bubbles. And because they're on their own separate cooldowns, when they're coming back online again, it's like, as she, when did she use this bubble? Where's that bubble coming from? Has she got one in the bank? You don't really know. And it means that Zarya can very easily charge herself, because when she's in a fight, people want to kill you, they start shooting you, you just pop your bubble and get a load of charge. Now, this is a pretty decent nerf, taking it down to 2 seconds from 2.5. Will it make much of a difference? I think it probably will. You're going to notice that you're weaker. So, I think a lot of Zarya plays now just go and play Orisa. <laughs> Orisa's so good. <laughs> but yeah, this, this was needed. It was needed because Zarya, again, like if you look at the highest tiers of the game, Zarya is just in every game. And if one team has a Zarya and another team doesn't, it can be difficult unless you're on certain maps, maybe Gibraltar. You're looking for verticality maybe with a Winston or a Diva instead. But, you know, yeah, this is uh, this was needed, but I feel a bit sad.
Next up is Diva, uh, another hero which does need a nerf. <laughs> Very strong. In fact, I must say as well, in the previous section here where it's like, <laughs> dev comment, early player sentiment predicting Zarya is one of the weakest solo tanks, although that wasn't true. <laughs> it's like a sick dev burn, like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I love it, I love it. But I think we we did. I mean, the community was like, well, I we don't think Zarya is too strong. In fact, who, who was the meta hero? I think Winston was seen as the super meta hero back in the day. Um... Back in the day, being like the closed alpha with like a shed ton of extremely good players, like Al Pros and all of that stuff. So, <laughs> anyway, Divas nerfs. These are what they are. Fusion cannon spread increase from 3.5 to 3.75, so it's less focused damage. You've, you know, it's, it's wider basically. Uh, booster impact damage reduced from 25 to 15, and this is the real kicker because boosters did a ton of damage 25 damage flying into someone you're like flying at them primary fire micro missiles into them hitting them and then meleeing them but sometimes you don't even melee you just carry on firing primary fire that is a, ma a massive amount of damage and you were like she was like the ultimate assassin diva was Do you, obviously she's massive you know she's coming to get you but you can't escape especially if you're like a widow or something she's just straight on top of you and kills you so she did need looking at her damage was ridiculously high and let's see what the devs say uh, Diva ended up feeling too deadly after the last round of changes, given how resilient she can be with the improved defense matrix. Both our stats and high-level player feedback. It's interesting that they've now, they now, and like high-level. I mean, I mean I, this must be from the Overwatch League guys, because I know that they talk to the Overwatch League guys for um, feedback and stuff. But it's interesting that they've uh, mentioned that. But also, like I said, at the highest end of the ladder. It's not like I'm at the highest end of the ladder, but if you watch any streamers playing at the highest end of the ladder, you'll see a ton of Diva. Uh, she's super effective and also if you look at the top 500 tank list as well you'll see a lot of diva um high level player feedback regarded her has not effective enough before that compared with other tanks so this is a partial revert to establish some middle ground there okay um yeah that's interesting like D diva's really strong at the moment so I, I will this be enough i don't know it's going to make a less of a assassin diving into you but i think she's still going to be quite effective um, but we'll see. It's kind of like a, a mini, mini change, that is, I'd say. And finally, we've got Kiriko. So she gets a nerf here. Swift step in vulnerability duration reduced from 0 0.5 to 0 0.25. Now, the dev comments here are, this invulnerability window is primarily intended to help avoid instantly dying to something unseen after teleporting through walls, but it ended up being a little too long and led to some confusion when shooting at Kiriko, which is fine. Um, I, 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 this is just going to punish you for crazier teleports, which to be honest, a lot of the time, if you do a suicidal teleport, you probably will get killed. Although I think if you're teleporting in with your dive, so if you're following your dive tank, which, which is a pretty strong tactic with Kiriko, if your Winston goes in and you teleport on top of him, um, now you're going to be less invulnerable. So in theory, if that happens to the enemy, the enemy can just ignore the Winston and kill you faster. I mean, it's only, you know, it's couple of points of a second faster but it's still faster so yeah uh, but yeah i think that's fine um we'll have to wait and see what kiriko does uh at the pro level of the game but i think kiriko is really fun at the moment i'm not sure i don't think kiriko is too op <laughs> she's obviously very survivable uh her damage is very hard to uh, be effective with but one thing i will say about kiriko's damage figures compared to like a moira or uh, any other support Generally with Kiriko, it's high value damage. It's damage that's landed on critical shots. I mean, if you land, you know, two shuriken, not shuriken, two kunai on uh, like a tracer, she's dead, yeah? Whereas Moira could hit the tracer in theory for more damage, but the tracer can jump around, get healing, rewind, you know, there's lots of stuff that could happen. Whereas with Kiriko, it's, it's, it's more deadly damage. But the thing with Kiriko is it's much harder to land that damage. Um, so I, th I think she's actually kind of okay at the moment, Kiriko. Uh, anyway, when are these patches going into the game? So they say, our current goal is to deploy these changes in an upcoming update in the, on November the 15th. So this is after Overwatch League finals, actually. Um, but I'm pretty sure the Overwatch League are playing on this patch. It's going to be weird. Uh, which is literally this weekend, I think, the Overwatch League finals is right. <laughs> anyway, our current goal is to deploy these changes in the upcoming patch on November the 5th, 2022. Uh, should that plan change, we will be sure to update you here. For those wanting a preview of how these changes will... Okay. So they just said what I said. Check out the Overwatch League playoffs on October the 30th. Uh, our lead hero designer, Alec Dawson, a new person to the team. I, I have no idea who that is, but I think he comes from Hearthstone or something. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll be hosting a Twitter space later on today at 11 PDT um, with a live Twitter Q&A to follow. So, yeah. All right. There you go, guys. That recaps the 
Um, you know, pretty decent changes, hero balance update. Um, like I said, it's a bit weird Sojin isn't being touched. I think Genji has been nerfed a little bit too much. But the other changes seem okay. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below, guys. And let me know what heroes you think need nerfing. Are there some ridiculously OP heroes? Or heroes that need buffs? That'd be an interesting one as well. All right, guys. Thank you for listening and watching the video. And I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. See you soon.